for such a tiny lady, Florence Pugh can do a lot of carrying, because she's carrying this whole goddamn movie. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Black Widow, finally long-awaited female lead film of the Marvel franchise. After 11 years, they finally got one, and they put it right in a time section in the franchise that means that this movie basically means nothing. But hey, at least you got one, right? The film follows Natasha Romanoff after the Sokovia Accords and follows her meeting up with her old Russian spy family, kind of going on this revenge tour against a bad guy that we didn't know about in Natasha's life, but they kind of team up, take down this bad guy, and then the movie ends essentially with nothing except mattering except the end credits scene. Essentially what Black Widow was trying to be, and I was hoping it would, and it did to an extent, is follow the same kind of lines of what Winter Soldier did, which, to be honest, Winter Soldier is probably one of the best Marvel movies in the entire franchise because it's a spy movie wrapped up in a superhero movie. And they try to do the same thing with this film, following in the same veins of uh, some older uh, James Bond movies, as well as some of the Jason Bourne movies. Pretty much after the first half of the film, things kind of start to fall into that generality of every single Marvel movie in terms of that things have to happen because that's the checklist that Marvel movies have to follow and the bad guy gives this stereotype 15 minute goddamn monologue about what his evil plan is even while being interrupted by two two little twists from Tasha he then keeps on having all these sub a clauses to all of his evil plans and that's kind of brings me back to what this film has an issue with is that while it is a black widow movie Technically speaking, it's the family members, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, and Rachel Wise, who actually give a character this, to this film because Black Widow has always been a secondary character for a reason. She has enough elements to be an interesting sub-character, but as a main character, she doesn't really have that much pull. Maybe appeal, but not pull in terms of a dramatic setting, and that's why Florence Pugh essentially carries this movie on her back because every time she's on screen, you're having a fun time. She has great witticism. She has great character. She has a lot of kind of tongue-in-cheek moments about the Marvel franchise as a whole, especially with the Black Widow character. And she just adds this connection that the audience desperately needs and they don't get that from the main character. David Harbour is a funny kind of interpretation of this Red Guardian character who is uh, definitely hanging up on his glory days. He's completely full of himself but he does have a bit of humility to him and Rachel Wise is a very straightforward almost autistic sort of character in terms of how she addresses things which she is more entertaining than Black Widow is and she rarely gets a presence in this movie. There's a few disappointments here and there mainly Taskmaster being this kind of yeah, predictable sort of character um, in terms of who they are but at the same time that's kind of what this movie falls into with the latter half of the film and it's not actually I would say the fault of the director because I was reading a little bit of an article about how the original director who was going to direct this movie she wanted to direct everything she wanted even to direct the final climax scene but they said well we're, we've already pretty much pre-shot that scene you don't have to worry about that you can just do the rest of the movie and she's like well no I want to shoot my movie if it's going to be my movie and that's why she didn't work out and they went with this other director and you've got to kind of give her credit for that because you know you would want to patty jenkins while she didn't do that great of a job with wonder woman 1984 she did direct most of the original film except for the added climax scene but she did a decent job with that so to have this director not even get to get that credit i feel that's a little bit of taking away from the director especially considering the movie starts off decently enough with a little bit of history about Natasha being the spy family in Ohio and then kind of how they fall into the Black Widow program. But all the while you're kind of wanting there to be more of an entertaining movie in here and there's the, even another re reference to Budapest which a lot of people keep making the joke about how when she talks about it in a kind of a halfway conversation that still sounds much more interesting than the movie we got. It does sound a lot more interesting than the movie we got. Black Widow doesn't have as many issues as it does having a retention level in terms of keeping you engaged. I kind of just was sitting in the theater going, man, I can see the whole entirety of this movie playing out before me. And yeah, most Marvel movies follow that path. 
spy movies in general kind of follow that path. But you would think that they've had so fucking long to make this movie that they would give a little bit of originality to. But no, it follows a checklist in terms of Marvel movies. It's not the worst one. There's a lot more that are far worse than this movie. But it definitely is one of the most boring. I enjoyed the character interactions more than any of the action scenes in this movie, aside from the first one. There's this one really neat fight scene on a bridge with Taskmaster and Scarlet, which is a really good fight scene. But everything after that is just so riddled with CG. Like, there's this one shot they keep showing of her landing on this weird panel thing in the sky. And you know it's fake, but it's just like, what is happening here? But <laughs> this was a spy movie. It starts off with the kind of the groundedness of the Jason Bourne movies, and then it ends on the absolute ridiculous high of Die Another Day in terms of James Bond movies. Black Widow is okay. I think that's pretty much the best way to describe it. It's a meh for me. Maybe some might enjoy it more than I did, but I find that it already had a handicap to it in terms of being a movie set in a period of time that you knew it didn't matter. We already know what happens to this character. We literally saw that two years ago. To see a prequel movie that has already kind of a definitive end to it, that's an issue. And that's why, again, a lot of people were much more hoping for this Budapest movie. But they had to do this one so they could tie in to having Florence Pugh essentially take over the Black Widow mantle and she's gonna be coming into the Hawkeye series if I'm correct, but we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But in the end, my final rating for Black Widow is a three out of seven. It's okay-ish. That's pretty much it for me. But then I knew this issue going into phase four of Marvel is that the only ones I'm really interested in at this point are Doctor Strange for the visual aspect and Sam Raimi directing. Spider-Man into the into like no way what's it no way home or whatever it is for the multiple universe thing and Maybe Shang-Chi because I want to see me some martial arts, but that's it Otherwise guys, I hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show undergrads It's been a while but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie Thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.